All right, well, welcome everyone to Home Office Hours Live with Vistaprint. Thank you so much for joining us today. If this is actually your first time joining us, Home Office Hours is a series of discussions on timely topics that we've put together. And we're going to be featuring guest speakers as well as our very own Vistaprint team members. We knew that small business needs have changed during these times and we wanted to help. So we created this series as a way for us all to connect and share advice during these times. And today we're actually teaming up again for another episode with Alignable, the Small Business Referral Network. Alignable is the online network where small business owners all across North America can drive leads and prospects, generate referrals, land new business, and build trusted relationships. Members use Alignable to get the industry answers that they need, connect with their local business communities or across the country, and increase buzz for their business. So of course, this all makes Alignable the perfect partner to help us bring our Vistaprint customers and Alignable members an episode about generating word of mouth referrals for your small business. So today we've got with us Eric Groves, who is the CEO and co-founder of Alignable. Eric, could you give us a hello? Hi, everybody. It's great to be here. Thanks for having us, Corey. Thank you for joining us. And we also have Ricky Engelberg, who is our Chief Marketing Officer here at Vistaprint. Ricky, can you say hi? Hey everyone, uh, thanks for having me on the show today. Awesome, thank you for joining us. So a couple of housekeeping items before we jump right into it. We're going to take questions at the end of the session, but definitely feel free to submit them all throughout. You can use the Q&A button if you're on Zoom, and you can use the comment function if you're on Facebook Live. We'll get those questions in the Q&A in Zoom. And then the recording is something we always get a lot of questions about. It will be up on Vistaprint's YouTube channel later today and we'll email it out as well to our Zoom registrants. So let's hop right into it. We've got 30 minutes today, so want to make sure that we have time for all your questions and all our great content. So Eric, um, let us set the stage here with you. Uh, what does word of mouth marketing or word of mouth referrals mean to you and for Alignable members? It can encompass a lot, right? And I know that Alignable has collected some data, you've done a lot of analysis on why word of mouth marketing is so important. Are there any big takeaways that you can share? Well, when, uh, thanks again for having me. And I think that it's a, it's a great topic because, you know, I love to start off with really thinking about why it's important, uh, how it works, and then what you can do to actually influence it. So why word of mouth marketing is so important? Well, in short, it's the number one source of new customers for small business owners. Uh, we surveyed uh, 15,000 businesses a couple of years back and 85% said it's their number one source of new customers, which is incredible, right? It's, it, it's a, great to know that that is the place to go. The challenge is it's not a form of media. I can't sort of give you $500 and say, go buy yourself some more word of mouth marketing. If only. So, so, yeah. So since it's not a form of media per se, um, you kind of have to break it down into its subcomponents to really understand how it works. And the great news is the subcomponents are easy. It's words, mouths, and referrals, right? And words are simply the things that you would like other people to share about you and your business. The mouths are the people that you've built a relationship with to the point where there's enough trust in that relationship that they're willing to put their reputation on the line for you and your business. So to introduce you to others. And then the process is really the sharing of words with your mouths on a regular basis. So you stay top of mind to make the cycle happen. And I think as we get into this, we'll, we'll talk about all the different things that you can do to actually influence it. But that's how we think about word of mouth marketing. Awesome, thank you for breaking that down for us. Ricky, what, what does word of mouth marketing mean to you? What does it mean for our Vistaprint small businesses? Well, uh and that, great to be here today. And Eric put it really well on what word of mouth marketing is. And I think to a large extent, I think so much of it is just forcing people to think from the a place of logic. People want to work, want to recommend people that they love. They want to understand that people care about people and they want to understand that people are experts in what they're working with them on. And so I was in a scenario two weeks ago where I needed a plumber for my house and just going and searching for a plumber was a nightmare. Um, our kitchen sink wasn't draining. It was Labor Day weekend and it was a sea of sameness 
that left me going mad if only anyone could actually tell me what solutions these plumbers had done for them. If only anyone had recommendations that they were passionate about. And I just kept falling short. And I think it's one of those things where ultimately, particularly as you're starting a small business, as you're going to work with small businesses, as whatever the case may be, so much of, so much of uh, the opportunity is time saving and people trans having a transference of trust. And that's what word of mouth marketing ultimately is. Like the notion that I trust Eric recommending this person because Eric cares as an expert in what he does. And I think everyone runs into that where you want the realtor who's able to recommend to you a great handyman in the neighborhood that could go and help make some fixes on your house that could recommend the that could recommend a lawyer for a closing you would want that trust to be transferred in but that trust is earned and that trust in a lot of cases comes from people being passionate participants in the community that matters most to them absolutely i think that trust is huge and to your point, and we were talking about this when we were shaping this topic, is those word of mouth referrals also make it easy on you, the consumer, so you don't have to go do all that work and all that research yourself. Because you've gotten the referral from someone you trust, it's easy for you to make that decision. Yeah, absolutely. And I think you know one of the things you think about is every day business owners get different challenges, right? One day it's about how do I get my sign approved? The next it's about finding great employees or finding access to customers and you're alone, right? In that decision-making process, yet those decisions are critical to your livelihood. And if you could only have a network of people that you trusted, that you could bounce those questions off of, many of whom have already solved those problems, how valuable would that be? It'd be invaluable as a business owner. And, you know, we're, we're lucky in large companies. Well, you're in a much larger company than I am. You know, if you've got a question about something, you can reach out to Ricky and go, hey, you know, how do I think about this from a marketing perspective? And, you know, in many ways, that's what we're trying to do with Alignable is give you access to all of these experts who just happen to be other business owners across the country, across North America, that you can just tap on the shoulder and say, hey, can you help me out with this? I'm looking for some advice. I think those knowledge and resources can really be just invaluable. Did you have something to answer, Ricky? Well, I think it's just interesting. I think <clears throat> Eric hit it well. Like, if you're going to start a flower shop, the person that's probably best to talk to about starting a flower shop is someone who started one last year. And that notion that someone else has already walked in your shoes, and how do you get that knowledge from them? In a lot of cases, that comes from the word of mouth recommendations and things. But in other cases, I think, again, trying to understand that what are those natural ways, uh, what are those natural ways for people to begin to let their customers be uh, advocates on their behalf? Um, so as much of it is about the like, uh, this flywheel effect of participate in the community create amazing products or service and have your customers be great evangelists for it and great things can happen. But if you don't have a great product and service, your customers can't be an evangelist for it. They could be the opposite. Yeah. And that could kill you. That is, that is word of mouth marketing you could easily buy, which yes. is negative word of mouth marketing. But if you're part of that community, you just as much have a chance to be, to be at referrals from other peers from, of small business owners by being a, a passionate part of that community that's able to help other people. I think very few people ever truly win alone. So much of it comes down to relationship, great relationships with your customers and with your peers. Yeah, it's a great, a great comment you made about florists because we actually had a group of florists who were struggling with COVID trying to figure out what to do. And they asked if we could just create a group so we have a group of like 100 florists from across the country who now can help each other try and figure out how they can survive and keep their business vibrant through this challenging time. And, you know, they don't compete with each other. They're all over the globe. Uh, and yet they're more than happy to jump in and give each other advice and, and share tips of what's working and what's not working to help each other succeed and get through troubling times. And it's just awesome to see. That's amazing. So great to see people helping each other like that. 
one of the few bonuses of this time, I think. Absolutely. So let's talk about those actions that you can take to actually influence word of mouth marketing. What can you do to make those word of mouth referrals happen? Uh, it would be awesome if they just happened on their own and some of them do, but there's a lot of things that you can do to, to, to make those happen. Uh, can you give us some tips, Eric? Yeah, and I'll take it from the perspective of what we do on Alignable and the platform itself. And I'm going to actually start with the mal the words. Um, I'm going to actually start with the mouths and then work to the words. So the mouths, if you think about it, is nothing more than a network. And so the question to ask yourself is who should be part of your network? Right? And you know that's why when you join Alignable, we sort of drop you into a five, 10 mile radius. And the reason for that is because 85% of a small business's customers typically come from a very close proximity. So we think the people you should get to know first are the people that are close by. Uh, and it turns out that you probably know a lot of these people. You may not know them as business owners, but you may know them as your, your child's uh, best friend's parent. Um, but needless to say, those, those people are really important to get into your network and your clients that you've worked with, right? And so those people you wanna sort of bring in first and then you, know, you can add people to your network anywhere on, in the country. So if you have a contact that is a supplier that's out in Montana, you can add them to your network. But the whole idea is get your community of people you know with you in your network. Because when you shift over to the word side, which is sharing information, right, then whenever you post something on the platform, it's going to get shared with your network. And they can then act as an echo chamber. But if you don't have a network, and you're out there posting content, nobody's going to hear it and be able to amplify it. So then when you think about the words that you share, there's two types of words. There's why you words and about you words. About you words are the things that you're doing, like a promotion that you're running, an event that you're doing, and that kind of thing. And that's great information for your network to know about, but it's not the, the juicy stuff that gets shared the most. The why you is the juicy stuff, and that's really your expertise. So um, we had an insurance agent out in Kansas that posted, you know, if your employees are using their personal vehicles to deliver product to a customer, here are two things that need to be in your insurance policy, right? That kind of content is super juicy because everybody in the community is like, wow, that's interesting. I didn't know that. What about this scenario? And that, per that turns that insurance agent into a resource within their community and that kind of information spreads rapidly. So those are the kind of things that you can do. And there's a myriad of things that you can post um, within Alignable, whether it's um, recommending a local business that you're passionate about, um, getting recommendations yourself, answering questions that other people have, all of those pieces of content that you post get shared. And as it's that sharing process that exposes you to people who then will come to your profile, check you out, see who recommends you, and reach out to you if it looks like you're someone that they want to work with. So it's just, you know, you just got to spin that process time after time. And, you know, as Ricky pointed out, you know, it's a long process. You got to turn the flywheel. But as, if you do it on a regular basis, it just builds momentum. And lo and behold, you start to generate more customer referrals. Awesome tips. Thank you. And I know, Ricky, something you mentioned, again, earlier when we were talking about this topic is that it does take time. And you just referenced that, Eric. So, Ricky, I think one of your tips was keep doing it. Don't give up. Yep. And I think that's one of the biggest things is the notion that uh, so much of it is about the compounding interest. If you start an Instagram page tomorrow, no one's going to care. But if you're incredibly passionate about what you're doing, if to pick on being a florist, if you have different arrangements each day, talk about why they are, understand what hashtags matter in your community. Over time, more and more people will take notice of it. If you're able to support other local businesses. And to me, that's one of the hardest things about word of mouth is that so much of it comes down to passion and time. The notion that you're going to do one thing one day and that, for lack of a better word, stunt is going to become a thing that makes everyone love you forever is tough. But the notion, but like you could think about the restaurants that you know that have Instagram accounts where they're posting their daily specials, where they're highlighting the people that work there. There's a great restaurant here in Jamaica Plain in Boston, Brassica Kitchen, where I feel like every day I get a little bit of slice of life of what, of the passion they bring to running that restaurant. And I think to a large extent, 
one of the biggest things for anyone trying to find their community is passion. If you don't have passion for what you're doing, then that's going to come through. And I think I've uh, platforms like TikTok have been interesting. You would think of, you wouldn't traditionally think of TikTok as a platform for where small businesses can go and thrive, but it's interesting seeing different people, they get commit to the platform. Like some of my favorite channels on uh, TikTok now are just different chefs showing different ways they prepare meals on TikTok at this point. And, but you can begin to see over time that passion can transcend any platform. All of this could be overwhelming for people. There's always gonna be new platforms. Do I, and how do you make sure that you're not stuck managing platforms seven hours a day between Pinterest, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, so on and so forth. But ultimately what it comes down to is whatever you do choose is the platform you're gonna care about, be passionate about it, be committed to it, and hopefully be passionate, have that passion translate into how your customers and championing your customers. Again, you see it in the house industry, you see it uh, where the joy that a contractor brings into the project they finish, taking people on that journey, creates a feeling of, of these micro communities. And I think that just goes a long way is that you have to believe in passion. You wouldn't be starting a small business most likely if you weren't incredibly passionate about what you were doing. And I think so much of it has to translate down into the way you want to connect with that community and into your product. If you do that, then there's a good chance that you get that flywheel effect uh, over time. But I can guarantee it will not happen in a week. Well, and absolutely. And one of the really interesting things to build off of there is you don't have to be the recipient first, right? If you see somebody who's doing something really interesting and they're a business owner, just stop and take the moment and introduce yourself to that business owner and just say, you know, I was really impressed by what you were doing and it really made me think differently about things. And I just wanted to share that with you. Now you've put yourself out for somebody and most people will react to that in a really favorable way about, you know, thank you so much. Uh, tell me a little bit about what you do, you know, and it's, it's okay to, when you think about building your referral base, because it is about trust to be the first one to extending trust rather than saying, Oh, who's going to, who's going to refer me customers. Think about who could you really put yourself out and refer because you think so highly of them. And sometimes that outbound effort first is the most productive way to get it back. Yeah, absolutely. I think that's such an important tip. There's an example that both of you have just shared, and, and they were each examples of someone putting their expertise and their knowledge out there for others, you know, to learn from. Is that something that you each would recommend? I know that we've gotten a lot of questions from small businesses on these episodes about, you know, what happens if I put my expertise out there and then other customers can learn from that and start doing what I do themselves. Uh, I think that's a fear there. Yeah, it's a great, great, great question. And, you know, I, I always love to go back to the, the example of the restaurateur, right? And the chef, the phenomenal chef that, you know, is worried about putting out the recipes of what they make, right? And, you know, it, it's your passion, right? Share it. If you think that someone's actually going to be able to make it as well as you, you know, leave out an ingredient or something and, you know, and get them to try and figure out what it is that is missing. Um, but, you know, you can have fun with it. But in reality, it's expertise and experience that really draws people to you. And the more you open yourself up to others, the more they will open themselves up to you. So if you think you can hide everything um, and, you know, just sell a product, you know, Amazon's going to put you out of business. You got to create an experience. So put your expertise out there, answer people's questions. We've got um, this one woman, Jennifer Aguilero down in uh, Raleigh, North Carolina, who literally went onto the platform and just started answering people's marketing questions. And her business exploded. She had to hire people to deal with all the inbound leads that she was getting because she was just giving good advice. And nobody you know, that asked, she would not, she would jump in and she'd look at their website, she'd give them advice and it was all for free. And it turned out to be the best lead generation thing you can imagine. So, you know, I really encourage people to put yourself out there a little bit, share your passion, your expertise and great things will happen. 
So. Yeah, I couldn't agree with you more. I mean, I think passion is a massive multiplier. And I think the notion of coalition building and I mean, think about this platform that we're creating here where like we're by no means the only people that have expertise in how to help small businesses. And we like, Corey, you've been able to bring people in from Square and from, from Google, from Alignable to different conversations over time. Because our goal is to share best practices and expertise with every small business. We want everyone to be able to, to succeed. And if we could do anything to help you succeed, we have a better chance of having a relationship with you over time. And I think it's, uh, I understand the fear of the secret recipe getting out. There's enough things that aren't secret recipes where we've all made, we've all have learnings that if we can help anyone with those learnings, the better off you'll be. And again, there's, uh, I remember when talking about training for a marathon, the best person to learn from was someone that was you a marathon ago. Like mm -hmm. someone that's run like 25 marathons is gonna be like, oh, you wanna make sure the night before, da, 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 da. and like someone that's like, I ran my first marathon, here's what last, last month, here's what I learned, is probably way better to teach you than someone that is on marathon 100. And I think trying to make sure that that knowledge doesn't uh, get bottled up, but rather shared is the ambition I think all of us have. Yeah, that's a great point. You know, we have a bunch of, um, we had a plumber who got on and said, you know, I don't really understand Facebook and what I'm supposed to be doing with it. And it was an awesome conversation because other plumbers chimed in and marketers chimed in. And it, it turned into just this beautiful dialogue between people helping each other out all the way through the thread. Um, and the guy at the end of it had this beautiful how-to guide of, you know, here's all the things you should do as a plumber. Um, and it's just remarkable wow. because, you know, small business owners love to help each other. And um, you can tell from both of us, we're passionate about helping small businesses too. Um, but, you know, e turn to each other because it's just a vast resource. Totally agree. All right. Well, we have a lot of questions coming in already. So I'm going to turn it over to Q&A from the audience. Uh, I did see a question here asking if all participants are muted. You are muted, but you can use the Q&A button at the bottom. Just put your questions in there. We'll take as many as we can in the next few minutes. And then we'll work with Eric and his team in Alignable to see if we can put an article together here to talk about some of the other questions that we don't get to. Um, so our first question here is, um, can you explain the link between word of mouth marketing and networking? Eric, can you start us off with that one? Oh, well, it's... You know, networking is a process of building relationships, right? And a relationship starts by finding some commonality. And so you think about it going to a networking event, and now a lot of those networking events are happening online, and we're trying to foster that on the platform. But it's a place to go to introduce yourself to people and find common interest. And then once you've found someone of common interest, you make a connection, and they become part of your network. Essentially, they become one of your mouths. And as you build a relationship with those people over time, as the trust grows, the more likely they are to refer uh, business your way. But you have to stay top of mind. And that's where the words part come into the equation. You need to feed your expertise and put your knowledge out there and share with these folks that are in your network so that, that you want to give them something to give to others right? Versus waiting for someone to come to the mechanic and say, hey, do you know a good accountant, right? It, it, it's, it's the accountant saying, hey, here's a tip of how to think about the new tax laws and how they change due to COVID um, and some advice on things you can do now to set yourself up for 2021. Okay, well, that kind of content's then going to get shared by them out to other people. And so you got to feed the engine. So the networking is just that component of building your mouths and then you got to feed them with the words. And that's word of mouth. Awesome. Thank you. We've got a number of questions about reviews here. Ricky, I think when you mentioned uh, bad word of mouth and how quickly that can, can add up, I think a lot of people's minds went to reviews. So maybe you can take, uh, I'll, I'll group all these questions into one here. So one, are reviews important? And then if you do get that one bad review in your record, what can you do um, other than doing your best in the future? You know, I think 
it's cliche to say, but in a lot of cases, by being an active participant on on the platforms, I'll use Yelp as an example. When you see someone that's there giving thanks on positive reviews and trying to respond to feedback on negative reviews, it it you you can you sense the passion. Um, I think if you're in a place where you're getting fifty percent negative reviews and fifty percent positive reviews, it might be a look in the mirror type thing. If you've got four nothing but four and five star reviews and occasional one star reviews, like I think it's so much of it comes down to the, what's the context of the review. I do think it's interesting in general. Um, I think trying to encourage your passionate fans to go and review you with, it's, without badgering is a constant fine line. But I think your true passionate fans will, uh, like, bad example live. But the notion of once you're going to give out a $50 gift card to your restaurant to the, your favorite review of the and featured a family that reviewed you uh, on it could create again those those moments of of course you would want to leave a review. How do you make it easy for people to go and and go and do those things? I think the thing on the negative reviews is if you believe in what you're doing, if you're passionate about it, and you have a great product, you can weather a negative review. If the negative review is a little too truthful, then you have to embrace it and get better. And I think that's one of the things a lot of people sometimes fight the negative reviews versus realizing there might actually be things to improve from them. Um, as a food nerd, it is always frustrating when a, you see a restaurant get a negative review based on things that have nothing to do with the quality of the restaurant. Like the line was too long, one star. Like that seems like a positive review of the restaurant. Is there incredibly popular? Um, but I think there's, it's so much of it is contextual. And I would say you're way better off at surviving a negative review if you're better for the positive reviews and part of that community and not just ignoring the community. Awesome advice, thank you. So I know you both are very busy and I don't wanna to take too much of your time. I know we're over at 12.30. So let's do one more question here. Um, I think this is a really interesting one. This uh, particular person teaches meditation, but I think it's a great question for a lot of different businesses. So I teach meditation, which feels different than other small businesses like plumbers, flower shops, etc. How would you suggest I take advantage of word of mouth when I'm just starting out? Eric, can you start us with that one? And then Ricky would love to hear from you. Well, uh, um, I always love to sort of start with by saying, you know, what is it your clients ask you? when you are working with them. You know, what are they coming, what stresses are they coming into uh, you with, right? And, and to think about how you coach them through that process, because that's the delivery of your expertise, one client at a time. And if you take that and you see, well, this is a pattern of what I go through. And typically, you know, when I start off with a new client, I go through a little bit of an assessment and I ask these three questions. And these are three questions that you should ask of yourself every day, every morning when you wake up, you know, and sharing that kind of expertise is a great way to start to get people to think about your passion differently and to turn to you to understand the process that you take your clients through for themselves. And so there is a great example of if you have a network of people and you're sharing that kind of advice, they're going to turn to it and they're going to have a friend who's stressing out about something and they're going to share those three tips and say, Hey, just check this out. Just give this a read. It's a great, you know, it's a great sort of recap and that's word of mouth marketing. So every business, regardless of whether you're a florist, you know, in meditation, uh, a lawyer, an accountant, a restaurateur, everybody has a passion that they can share with others to draw attention to that passion, which then, becomes part of the attention to that business. Awesome. Thank you. I, my, my, my biggest advice for any business, I'll stick with the, on the meditation one is like, you have to know who your audience is. And if you know who your audience is and not knowing much about this meditation business, uh, if it was a YouTube channel or if it's a, facil if it's a lo physical location, trying to understand where might you actually find the customers that matter most to you 
and what communities are they a part of? And again, commit to being part of those communities and figure out uh, how to make sure that you're not a tourist to them, but rather a trusted part of the community that's able to speak in their language. And I think that's something that uh, is so critical. If you were, again, I'll use a Boston example, but there's such thriving uh, in the South End or Jamaica Plain, there's such thriving Facebook groups for local communities that if I were opening a business in one of those areas, the first place I would want to talk about that I'm going to open this business months before it opened was in one of those communities, be it on Nextdoor or on Facebook, to actually- Or lineable. <laughs> or lineable. <laughs> but I was saying, a, a business where, cons where consumers are often, where it's just as much about the consumers that are living, the people that live in those neighborhoods, um, so that you're able to say, hey, we're going to be opening a meditation place on Center Street. We'd love to serve you all, see you all in four months. How do you begin to have that conversation with the people that live in the neighborhood? There was nothing more frustrating for me. I used to live in Portland, Oregon for 16 years and we lived a block away from the main street in this in one neighborhood. And you would see businesses go in that did nothing to actually tell the community they were opening. And in some cases, the community was overserved. But in, like, when you're like, oh great, another ice cream place. That's the fourth one on the street. Um, and you never have too much ice cream. <laughs> you can't, uh, unfortunately, from a business standpoint, apparently you could. Um, so it's just one of those things where so much of it is being part of the community that you want to be a part of and get there early and often on places like Alignable. Uh, and I think that's, but a lot of that comes down to spending time at a whiteboard and going, who do I actually want to have be my customers and how do I become part of their universe and do the legwork and great things again and trust that it takes time. Yep. I think that's definitely something that's come through loud and clear during this discussion. Well, thank you both so much. I know we still have, we have many questions and, and we'll work to address all of those after this. Um, but thank you, Eric. Thank you, Ricky, for taking the time to, to have this session for both our, our members and our Vistaprint customers. Uh, I think it's been really helpful. And uh, from all the questions and engagement, I think it's been very useful to the audience. So definitely appreciate you taking the time. My pleasure. Thanks. And uh, great to spend some time with you guys. Well, thanks, Eric. Thanks, Corey. See you all soon. For thanks our, for our um, audience. Thank you. Um, to the audience, uh, we're going to be hosting these every other week, covering lots of different topics. There's a survey at the end. Let us know what you want to hear, and we will do our best to cover it in the future. And you can also check out alignable.com. There's lots more resources there on online networking, word of mouth marketing, and then vistaprint.com slash hub has lots of small business resource tips. So multiple resources for you uh, post this webinar, and we'll include those in the follow-up link as well. So thank you again to the audience for joining us. Thank you guys for taking the time. And this has been Home Office Hours Live. We'll talk with you soon. Have a great one. Take care.